I have to say that um, I feel a bit uh, intimidated because um, uh, immunopsychiatry is not at all uh, my main expertise. I'm mainly a clinician. And in research, my expertise in, in, is in cognitive neuroscience. So I, I will briefly describe um, the potential link between mast cells and uh, uh, inflammation-related depression. Thank you. So first, my conflict of interest with pharmaceutical industry and as a co-founder of a startup. Uh, what about mastocytosis? Um, so what a mas mastocytosis is a rare condition. Uh, it's a clonal disorder uh, characterized by the accumulation of mast cells or their unregulated activation. Uh, Secit mutations have been described. Uh, and it's very important to distinguish between the life-threatening aggressive forms of uh, mastocytosis, for instance, mast cells, leukemia, and uh, other more prevalent, indolent forms of mastocytosis. So what about the clinical symptoms in indolent, in indolent forms of mastocytosis? Uh, two types of symptoms. Uh, symptoms related to mast cells uh, mediators release, for instance, maculopapular rash, flush syndrome, or even anaphylactic shock, spontaneous anaphylactic shocks. And on the other side, mast cell tissular infiltration in any organs, uh, virtually any organs. So what about the localization of mast cells in the body? Uh, mainly in the skin, in a perivascular localization, uh, but also in the digestive tracts, uh, in the bones, uh, and um, for our interest here, in the brain. So I will first describe the neuropsychiatric features. Um, as you know, uh, Neuroinflammation have been demonstrated in many and virtually all psychiatric conditions uh, with the role of uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines, the role of innate immunity uh, and T cells. Uh, so far, no studies on mast cells and the role of tryptophan metabolism as a potential final pathway uh, in this uh, neuroinflammation uh, uh, psychiatric disorders, neuroinflammation uh, inducing uh, psychiatric disorders. So, uh, what about the neuropsychiatric features uh, in indolent forms of mastocytosis? Um, it's mainly depression with a high rate uh, prevalence of uh, depression, uh, about uh, uh, two thirds uh, of the patients. Stress, alexithymia, as uh, uh, frequently in uh, inflammation related depression cognitive impairment, attention impairment, memory impairment, and as in other conditions with uh, inflammation, uh, disturbed sleep, asthenia, and motivation loss. We uh, wanted to, to study the correlations, the potential correlations between these features in patients with indolent forms of mastocytosis and the tryptophan uh, metabolism pathway. Uh, in order to, to try uh, to demonstrate a potential role of mast cells in neuroinflammation. So as you know, tryptophan is mainly uh, used uh, for the uh, synthesis of uh, proteins, but also serotonin and kinurenin. Kinurenin that can be transformed either in kinurenic acid or kinolinic acid with neurotoxicity or oxidative stress uh, due to um, kinolinic acid. What we know is that you can induce uh, IDO uh, with pro-inflammatory pro cytokines uh, that will lead to the uh, activation of the kinurenin pathway and therefore accumulation of kinolinic acid. So we performed a, a prospective multicentric study on this uh, rare condition, uh, studying uh, uh, 54 uh, patients with mastocytosis compared to age-matched healthy controls. 
and uh, again with um, high mean depression scores. Uh, so um, again, two-thirds two of patients with uh, uh, mild to moderate depression or even severe depression, and high mean perceived stress. And we found uh, reduced serotonin levels, uh, reduced tryptophan levels in comparison with uh, controls, uh, increased, uh, uh, lower, sorry, uh, uh, kinurenin levels, and as a result, when uh, uh, determining the IDO activity uh, using kinurenin levels and tryptophan levels, uh, an increased IDO activity. with also accumulation of quinolinic acid and quinolinic acid, and actually, as in other inflammation-related uh, conditions uh, in depression, uh, an imbalance toward quinolinic acid. We also uh, found a correlation between this increased IDO activity and uh, uh, depressive scores. So as we can see, oops, not uh, here, uh, a correlation between, uh, uh, a negative correlation between the tryptophan levels uh, and uh, uh, scores of depression and a positive correlation between the IDO activity and uh, depression level. We also performed uh, a more recently published uh, study uh, using uh, neuroimaging uh, and demonstrating uh, uh, an increased uh, perfusion uh, in uh, basal ganglia, mostly in the putamen, uh, in uh, patients with mastocytosis and uh, uh, cognitive uh, complaints, uh, and uh, negative correlations that you can see here between the blood flow in the putamen here and uh, the lack of motivation uh, that could be uh, captured using uh, a factor analysis of the uh, SCL19, uh, mostly according to the feeling of effort in uh, every day. So what are the main results of uh, these two studies? Uh, we found uh, alteration of tryptophan metabolism in, meta in uh, mastocytosis with uh, low tryptophan and low serotonin rates uh, due to um, high uh, IDO activity. We found a correlation uh, uh, with uh, depression and perceived stress. So it's basically uh, what was found in other models of uh, inflammatory depression, for instance, the work of Lucille with uh, interferon-treated patients. Uh, so mast cells could play a role uh, in inflammatory-induced depression by uh, uh, secreting pro-inflammatory cytokines, leading to uh, kinuranin production, uh, and uh, uh, finally, eventually, to uh, kinolinic acid uh, increase. What are the, the main ongoing projects uh, uh, in uh, this field of mastocytosis? Uh, well, we, we, we first want to better understand the potential link between neuropsychiatric symptoms and digestive symptoms that are um, uh, very frequent in mastocytosis. Uh, and we are studying with Harry Sokol the interplay between microbiota, mast cells, and the kinuranin pathway. We also want to uh, reproduce these um, results in other uh, auto-inflammatory disease, st studying, for instance, inflammasome disorders. Uh, we, we, we can study patients with rare mutation of the inflammasome, for, for instance, LRP3 mutations, and uh, we, we basically uh, um, uh, highlight the, the, the same features in these uh, patients with uh, auto-inflammatory disease. We are also looking for uh, mast cell activation syndrome in treatment-resistant pa patients, uh, depressive patients, uh, and uh, 
um, it seems to 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 be something we 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 have to better understand uh, the fact that there there might be a high prevalence uh, or a quite high prevalence of uh, MCAS uh, in TRD patients, and also we want to to build. Uh, new therapeutic strategies according to, to these results. So, a few words uh, to conclude about these uh, ther therapeutic uh, strategies. Uh, first, uh, we've demonstrated that uh, uh, using uh, um, a chemotherapy that targets mast cells, uh, mazitinib, uh, we can uh, reduce uh, psychiatric symptoms, here, for instance, depressive symptoms. More recently, using a, a, um, a global outcome that take into account depressive symptoms, we also demonstrated a benefit of mazitinib uh, in a mastocytosis a patient with a indolent form of mastocytosis. And uh, we are very interested in, in the use of ketamine uh, uh, in psychiatry and here in auto-inflammatory disorders. Uh, because we, we observed in these patients uh, 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 spec spectacular efficacy uh, of ketamine. In these patients, I mean both in mastocytosis patients and in patients with uh, inflammasome disorders. We found, uh, it's a, an ongoing work, uh, that uh, this efficacy uh, correlates with uh, pretreatment quinolinic acid levels. And actually, you know that quinolinic acid is an NMDA agonist, so ketamine that is uh, an NMDA antagonist might counteract uh, the effect of uh, quinolinic acid uh, accumulation due to inflammation. Uh, we also found that this efficacy correlates with other biomarkers that might be related to uh, microglia changes or at least monocyte macrophage uh, changes. Uh, and we demonstrated that uh, we, we can use peripheral biomarkers, both in preclinical models and in patients with TRD, uh, with a set of biomarkers that are partly uh, uh, related to the kinurinin pathway. And for now, I can't be more specific. And we have also an ongoing clinical study. I'm in charge of uh, a study in anesthesia uh, um, um, that focus on the prevention of postoperative cognitive decline in the elderly uh, using ketamine uh, versus placebo in uh, RCT. So I want to thank uh, my collaborators. Uh, first, uh, Fabrice Chrétien, uh, who is uh, the head of my lab at Pasteur Institute now, uh, and also Olivier Hermine uh, and uh, Sophie Georgien Lavial at uh, Imagine Institute at Necker Hospital. Uh, Olivier Hermine is uh, with Olivier Lortolari in charge of uh, uh, the Center for uh, Rare Disease dedicated to mastocytosis and also collaboration uh, about microbiota with Harry Sokol at uh, St. Antoine's Hospital and uh, Professor Loney at Clary Boisier Hospital. Mm -hmm.